If you haven't seen the previous video in this series, follow the link on your screen or click the link in the description or pinned comment below. Or don't, whatever. I know some of you dinglings don't click the link anyway, but wonder why you're lost. This is why. Thirty-three second Disney logo in the '90s makes me thankful this isn't a Pixar joint as well. Except this obviously isn't the Disney logo from the '90s. This is. Oof! I just got hit with a wave of deja vu. These lazy ass birds are lazy. That strangely sounds like my comment section. But anyway, this is a fairly accurate representation of birds in Africa. There are a ton of examples of birds just hitching a ride on larger animals, so I'm just counting this one as an ignorance of reality sin. This is a ritual that needs to be done for some reason. Sinning African rituals. Even God shares his approval of the new lion cub by shining light down at the appropriate moment. Hopefully he'll save Simba's dad when the time comes too. Which God? because I'm sure this story takes place in a location inspired by Kenya in a time period around 1280 BC, if we're giving any credence to Scar's appearance in the Hercules film. And if we are, then the Greco-Roman gods are the ones you're talking about, and I doubt Zeus gives a f If we aren't, then I'll assume you're talking about the god of the Jews, in which case, yeah, he approves of Simba. He supposedly created everything, right? You know, like evil, disease, and taxes? Of course he approves of the things he created. He's as mad as a hippo with a hernia. Wouldn't any mammal with a hernia be in basically the same amount of pain slash anger? I think the reference was about the fact that hippos are incredibly short-tempered there, Jer. They kill about 3,000 humans every year, which is incredible for something that looks like a Prius on legs. Scar pretty much had no choice but to be a villain, since his parents named him Scar, and he was born with evil eyes. Are green eyes considered evil? In most cases in animation, wouldn't you consider red eyes to be evil? Also, Scar's original name is Taka, which doesn't necessarily refute what you're saying, as Taka means garbage in Swahili, but still, his parents didn't name him Scar, and that's the sin here. What am I going to do with him? I don't know, but after this scene, I would definitely be on the lookout for Scar to pull some straight-up Hamlet in the next couple of days. Jeremy makes a pop culture reference that this movie is also making so it shouldn't count cliche. His son is awake. So they got James Earl Jones and Madge Sinclair to basically reprise their roles as king and queen from coming to America. So does that mean Simba's gonna go to Queens and work at a McDowell's? No. Does Simba one day get pulled over for having a trans hooker in his car? Oof, talk about a dated video. I'm not one of them cancel culture types, but even I wouldn't have touched that one in 2015. Everything the light touches is our kingdom. Manifest Destiny. Without getting too deeply into this, that is not what Manifest Destiny means, nor is it an example of it. That concept applies to land that wasn't already yours. We just saw an entire sequence showing the lions rule the Pride Lands, apparently with the consent of all the other animals. What about that shadowy place? That's beyond our borders. Okay, first of all, if it's a shadowy place, then the light ain't touching it, and Simba shouldn't have to ask. Second of all, you've just said the light and sight were your borders. But now suddenly, oh yeah, we have interior borders around that scary place. I forgot. I like how you contradict yourself by putting words in someone else's mouth. I've never seen a contradictory straw man before. Congratulations on inventing that. Mufasa didn't say anything about sight. You put that word there. You then chastise Simba for not understanding the very simple concept of everything the light touches while yourself asking the same question Simba did. I thought it was easy to understand. Everything the light touches. If it's in shadow, it's not a part of the kingdom. There is nothing sudden about that. It is explicitly implied the shadow area is not their kingdom because the light doesn't touch it. What the hell are you on? Everything you see exists together in a delicate balance. That's why they're a gazelle bounding nearby with no fear whatsoever that I might eat them at any moment. Just like the real Africa. You realize you're showing a scene of gazelle running away, right? I mean, they're not just kicking it in front of the lions, they're obviously leaving the area. And even if they weren't, this is an animated film with lions and animals that talk. I don't think anyone was under any assumption this is depicting the real Africa, especially with a male lion taking a loving walk with a single male cub. You know that doesn't happen, right? But sure, let's focus on the gazelle. Mufasa? Simba? Mufasa allows Simba to be a dick to his loyal servants. That is entirely the point of a servant to serve a purpose. In this case, Zazu serves the purpose of teaching his son an invaluable trait necessary for a lion's survival. 
how to stalk prey. I never get to go anywhere. You're like six days old, dude. Jesus. It's so weird that you just answer the characters in movies. I might have to create a cliche for that. Wait, 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 Birdman. You've already created that cliche in a previous video. I did? Which one? And who are you? The Jurassic Park The Lost World video. And I'm you from the future. Well, kind of. Anyway, you should already have a cliche for that. Hmm, okay. W wait a minute, I've never done a video on Jurassic Park, let alone my favorite in the franchise. I mean, I would know. Hmm, I guess he was right. I'm technically not future Birdman. More like alternate dimension Birdman. Uh, hello? What are you mumbling about? I need to get back to sending this video, pal. Uh, yeah, whatever. The point is that you came up with a cliche for that already, so think of one now. Okay. I've got it. If you're me, then you know what I'm going to say. Ready? On three. One, two, three. three. Jeremy, Jeremy yells run out of the screen cliche. cliche. Wait, what? That is not how this went last time. I mean, it is, because that's what I said originally, but the cliche is definitely Jeremy yells at the screen cliche. Uh, see? You're not the real Birdman. You're false Birdman. FB for short. Dude, was I this insufferable? I am so sorry, FB. You're mumbling again. And why would it be yelling at the screen if he isn't actually yelling? Jesus, you sound like Stan. Well, the point wasn't that he's actually yelling, but that just like the crazy people in the theater that talk to the screen like the characters in the movies could hear them, well, you know, they yell. I don't know. If it were me that came up with that, I'd have said talks to the screen cliche. Would have been worth five cents, too. When I'm king... What'll that make you? Why does everyone assume that Scar won't die well before Mufasa does? And why does Scar think he'll ever have a shot at the throne anyway? Scar seems well beyond the years where his possible royalty would even matter that much to him. He should have thought about killing Mufasa long ago before Simba was even born. That was two unrelated questions in a couple of statements. How is someone that's not me supposed to answer all of that? You package so much bullshit into a single sin, and that's why you get away with this nonsense. Why wouldn't people assume the older brother dies first, especially one that's a target like a king? And the film proves him right. Mufasa died first, and he became the king. I mean, you're quite literally arguing against the events of the film. And I honestly don't understand what you mean by Scar seems well beyond the years where his possible royalty would matter to him. Isn't Mufasa older than him, and doesn't he care about his throne? I mean, what? Simba walks in on Nala while she's taking a bath. He's also seen her nude, too. Any other revelation you want to share with us, you virgin? But you two turtle doves have no choice. Having no choice is like the baseline attribute of a Disney character. It's almost like Disney movies were usually about royalty or something. This whimsical break in the song could have been genuinely tragic. Okay. But it wasn't, so what's the sin for, exactly? Look, I know we're in a cartoon musical where anything can happen, but I'm drawing a line at synchronized animal pyramid stacking. Jeremy doesn't know what the word anything means. Zazu survives this, damn it. Jeremy doesn't know what the word anything means. <laughs> All right, it worked! Right, our plan to distract Zazu with song and then trap him under a rhino's butt came off without a hitch. How f***ing lucky are we? I'm aware that this is Jeremy we're talking about, but f hell. The entire point was to ditch Zazu by any means necessary. This fool is pretending they were trying to get him crushed specifically. Hey genius, it was my idea. It was? I distinctly remember you saying, So how are we gonna ditch the dodo? Oh, I know. And it was Simba doing the talking until Zazu interrupted. So how did you come up with it, Nala, you lying whore? I'm not going to get hung up on the fact that the now pretending to be progressive channel CinemaSins called a trans person a trans and a female child a whore. Oops, got hung up on that. But I will say that there is a difference between an idea and a plan. It was Nala's idea, but Simba's plan. The elephant graveyard is creepy and cool, but how do all the elephants know to come here right before they die? Wouldn't some of them be like, F*** it, I'm dying right here where I am? Or are you saying they die, but then other elephants or hyenas or some animal carries the bones all the way here just to keep this creepy spot a thing? <sighs> I'm sure some elephants die on the spot, Jeremy. The point in this movie is this is the spot most elephants come to die. Do you just say that a human graveyard isn't a human graveyard because some people die at sea, for example? What do you think you're saying here? <laughs> do we order this dinner to go? No. Why? Because there it goes! <laughs> nice joke, considering you spent precious seconds of escape time to come up with it. Jeremy sends something he likes cliche. Oh, so you do have that one. Uh, yeah? And dude, why do you sound like that? You don't need to know. It isn't your time yet, daniel son. Where's Zazu? Do you even worry about Zazu anymore after a rhino sat on his body? Dude, 
This is an animated film where hyenas work with a lion, a warthog chills with a mongoose, and a monkey is a shaman. Build your bridge and get over it. This is the longest spine anyone has ever slid down to escape in the history of spine slide escapes. Either you don't know how big an African bush elephant is in comparison to a lion cub, or you don't know what perception means. I'm actually fine with Mufasa knowing Simba was in the elephant graveyard, but knowing exactly where he was to save him in time? In time for what? This particular moment? You realize Simba and Nala have been running away from the hyenas for a while now, right? My point is Mufasa could have saved them at any one of those points but didn't or was unable to. Conveniently, for this convenient sin, you've chosen the point he was able to do so, forgetting all the other times they barely escaped death. You're not making the point you think you are. So Scar's plan to get Simba into the northern border actually worked, but if he successfully killed Simba, then what? Was his plan to then kill Mufasa? Potentially, sure. I mean, that's what ended up happening anyway. But if he didn't, Mufasa would have to sire another heir or die and transfer the crown to Scar. You deliberately disobeyed me. You just said that two minutes ago. You deliberately disobeyed me. Is this a repetitive ad or a copy-paste screenwriter? Discuss. Says the guy that starts off every single video with the logo sin. <laughs> wow, Scar found a way to get nature itself on board with his musical number. Sinning, be prepared. That's worth these many sins. Maybe Frightened Wildebeest would stampede down into a gulch like this. Maybe they wouldn't. I have my doubts. But my real question is, with a ridge that steep, how come half of them aren't falling and slipping and rolling all the way down this steep-ass goddamn rock surface? Um, because Wildebeests are pretty good at this sort of thing? Tons of clear area to the right here, but Simba also went to the Prometheus school of running away from things. I don't think anything annoys me more about modern film discourse than the insistence that characters behave perfectly, especially when under stress. If characters don't have flaws or make mistakes, why would you watch them? Who the hell wants to watch a movie called The Perfect Puffingtons, where nothing happens because everyone does everything perfectly? Simba is, for any length of time, able to outrun the herd. Jeremy is unaware that lions run at the same speed as wildebeests and that this one had a head start. Oh, live the king. Well, sh this movie has some balls. The death of Mufasa is something very few cartoons are willing to do. It's plot appropriate, it's dramatic, so we will remove five sins. Despite that, those remove sins only to immediately undermine the removal cliche. <laughs> Do you have that one, fake Birdman? Huh? What? No, we didn't have that one. And why the hell am I a fake? <sighs> I was nowhere near this untrusting when he showed up in my Cloverfield Paradox video. Run away and never return. Question, why doesn't he just kill and or eat Simba right now? There are no witnesses. And if he's telling him to run away, there's obviously a benefit for Scar to having Simba out of the picture. And he's a wimpy baby lion, who you already tried to have killed earlier anyway. So why send away alive the one dude that can challenge your claim to the throne? This is so much worse than monologuing. Kill him. What? This is even worse than not killing him. Why didn't you kill him six seconds ago? Why are you letting this turn into a game for the hyenas and shit? You want him dead, right? They're the fools that failed you last time, dog. The f***. <laughs> Am I to believe that you have never seen this film and are only now reviewing it for the first time in 2015? Because that's the only possible way these two sins make any logical sense. But even then, upon Scar plainly refuting the previous sin, you left it in the video. Simba has to climb this to avoid the hyenas, but the movie glosses over that and he's at the top before they even catch up. Probably because cats can climb things and hyenas cannot. Sazu conveniently forgets that Scar punched him into a rock a minute ago when this started getting real. It's almost like he forgets the guy has all the markings of a true villain, that this is what he wanted all along and he was probably responsible for it. Even if he suspects Scar, which would be a weird thing to suspect considering Mufasa was killed by wildebeests, what the hell is he going to do about it? He's a bird! Buzzards start swirling around an animal that is clearly not dead and hasn't begun to decay for them to be attracted to it yet. That is not how vultures work. They will follow a stranded animal and wait for it to die in addition to scavenging already dead creatures. In fact, vultures love following lions specifically because they kill other animals that they'll attempt to scavenge and they absolutely will eat a lion that appears to be dead. What Jeremy isn't showing you is that this is what Simba currently looks like. Timon and Pumbaa ex machina. But my question is, why do they even give a sh a blatant scene manipulation. Timon and Pumbaa answer your question explicitly and you cut it out of the video. Get out! Get out! Get out of here! I love this bowling for buzzards! <laughs> Get some every time! It means no worries for the rest of your day. Even if you kill your dad, we promise that's not bad. Wait. <laughs> that was funny. Dude, what the f***? Were you seriously about to remove a sin while he was singing? Have you not created Jeremy sings in a video cliche, yet... Holy shit, you sounded like me for a second!
Cause I am you, you idiot. What kind of f***y universe is this? Oh man, we got a lot of work to do. Anyway, Jeremy sings in a video cliche. That was a lot of sins, man. You patting my sin count, bro? Cute song, but shaving his claws down like this is a horrible idea that only endangers him further out here in the wild, you dolt. It's almost like, being a mongoose, he doesn't give a dick about what endangers the dangerous lion and only about his own safety like he intimated at the beginning of this scene. And I got down How did you feel? Every time that I... Hey, Pumba, not in front of the kids. Oh. So it's completely okay to show and sound out farts on screen, just not call them by their name. Gotcha. I mean, it's... Possible the next lyric was sharded. Hakuna Matata! Hakuna Matata glosses over the thing that made Timon an outcast. Did he murder a family of four? I bet he murdered a family of four. Typically, when making these videos, I do a ton of research, especially those regarding animals, because I love learning about them irrespective of my job here on YouTube. But for this film, I've seen it so many times, I didn't really feel the need to do much. I said all that to say this. Timon is a meerkat. One of the most obvious parts of a meerkat's behavior is that they look out for others. To me, this means it's blatantly obvious that Timon is an outcast because he failed at his job. Now, I haven't looked that up, and it doesn't really matter because CinemaSins is not the arbiter of film criticism, so I don't have to take everything they say seriously, unlike the stands. Oh god, he's here too? Silence, you. But I'm willing to put my intuition to the test and allow the audience to fact-check me there. Go on, why is Timon an outcast? Let me know in the comments section. How a bug's life should have ended. I mean, Hopper was kind of eaten by a bird. Simba definitely wasn't interesting during the time he grew into an adult, so we'll tell that story and dissolves as he walks across a log. Bruv, this movie is an hour and 30 minutes. Do you really need unnecessary side story stuff? Wait a minute, don't answer that. The answer is yes, so you can shit on it for no reason. Scar wanted to be king, for some reason. More food? Surely he had enough. More women? Uh, knowing Scar, definitely not. So what the hell did he want from being king? At least King Claudius wanted to get a wife out of the deal. I don't see what Scar's motive is. The only thing he did was make the hyenas and lions live together. And then... profits? What do you mean, surely he had enough food? How do you know that for sure? I mean, he wasn't exactly emaciated, but he damn sure wasn't as yoked as Mufasa. And are you implying Scar is gay? I mean, I know members of the LGBT like to ship and fantasize about certain characters representing their community, but you're hetero, so you're pandering. In a video where you shit on a trans person. Ninja Magic Medicine Monkey is so ninja, I wonder why any of this movie had to happen. And I'm left wondering what the hell Rafiki could have done to Scar to prevent it. Movie about remote African animals simply jam-packed with pop culture references. You know, for kids. Actually, for adults. I keep telling you that kids' movies often come packed with references that adults can enjoy as well. The irony is that you are always suggesting these are films only kids will see, but then you make a video on them. You're calling yourself and your audience children, is what I'm saying. Thankfully for the resolution of the story, Nala wanders really f***ing far from the Pride Lands to hunt, and does so on the huge continent of Africa, in the exact direction where Simba is. Phew, close one there. I see we're ignoring the passage of time you yourself pointed out earlier. My point is that Nala hasn't come here once in the three to four years it's taken Simba to reach sexual maturity, so this convenience sin you're attempting to make doesn't hold much water. You're also forgetting the plot. Scar's rule has created a drought that forced Nala to hunt this far out. Also, Nala, a freaking force of nature lioness, can't catch up to a freaking warthog. In addition to lions and wildebeests, Jeremy doesn't know how fast and agile warthogs are. I'm not saying they always escape lions, but it's just about 50-50. By the way, Simba should get his ass kicked in this fight. He's been living the Hakuna Matata life, remember? He hasn't never had to hunt or do anything badass his entire life. Doesn't really matter. He's still a healthy adult male lion. Males are significantly larger and stronger than the females of the species. If this were reality, Nala's ass would be as dead as fried chicken. Pleasure's all mine. Wait a minute, Pumbaa was food a minute ago. Are you telling me if someone vouches for him, he ceases to be food? Yeah. Can you feel the love I realize they knew each other as kids and were betrothed even as kids, and that they're still the only two lions way out here. In but still, this hey I recognize you now I love you it seems rushed as hell. It's called being in heat. Something you've never experienced, apparently. Tim, if you don't do something soon, everyone will starve. I can't. Why can't you do something? Why can only the heir to the throne we just now learned was alive do something? Because not only is he the remaining piece of evidence that Scar was lying, males are significantly larger and stronger than the females of the species. If this were reality- He's alive! And I'll show him to you! Rafiki gets Simba's hopes up again, only to show him the idea of his dad being alive is one of those metaphorical things. I think Simba would have been happier with one of those Hogwarts paintings of living dead people. He lives in you. 
The power was inside you all along, cliche. Again, another two sins for the same concept. Rafiki telling Simba that his father was still alive was an obvious nod to the he lives in you thing, something you clearly recognize because you pointed it out. So you've just said the same thing twice and doubled the sins. You know you can do that in a single sin blurb, right? Cool part of the movie, I suppose, but would Simba have gone back to claim his throne without this supernatural dad vision? I feel like his character would have been stronger if he hadn't needed this vision to make the choice. Am I alone here? Yes, you are alone here. Most people understand the need for motivation. Why the heck do you think we follow fit chicks on IG doing pointless exercises that aren't actually targeting muscle groups? So they can yell about the creeps watching them in the gym? No, it's so that we can creep on them without them even knowing about it. Simba's going home, but you know what? This scene isn't inspiring enough. Let's add a shooting star. You know what? We need another. Okay, one more and we'll call it a perfect shot. Thank you. It's amazing how you live in Tennessee, but have never actually experienced the wilderness without any light pollution. In case you were unaware, there are millions of meteors in our sky every single night. Considering the African savanna doesn't have a drop of light pollution, you should see shooting stars in every night scene. The real sin is that there weren't more. You guys have to create a diversion. Oh, really? What did you plan to do if Timon and Pumbaa didn't make the trip? Something else. Next question. Tell me it's not true. It's true. Simba tells the truth, but somehow doesn't give the full story. One that he would easily be forgiven for, even if it's 100% true. You'd think as an adult he'd be like, my stupid little kid roar caused a bunch of wildebeest to stampede? I think not. The point of the scene is that Simba still feels responsible for his father's death after having been gaslit by Scar and left to stew on it for a few years. And let's be clear here, Mufasa's death doesn't happen if Simba wasn't there in the first place. I mean, are you not watching this movie? Are you just skimming through it? He was there to save his son, and if his son was home where he was supposed to be, Mufasa might still be alive. He is partially to blame. That is not a lie. Well, it's over now. Benson has joined the battle. Jeremy makes a pop culture record. Are you talking to me? Now they're in for it. They call me Mr. Pig! Finally, Taxi Driver and In the Heat of the Night, together at last. Jeremy sends a movie for making a pop culture reference after literally just doing one himself. Villain does some bullshit to justify the good-hearted hero straight up killing them cliche. In other words, a villain. I'm sorry, I want him to win, for sure, but Simba has never been in a fight. Unless during that unimportant time where he was walking across a log and aged five years, he somehow joined a dojo or something we didn't see, he should get his ass kicked right here. <laughs> Such a weird assortment of criticism. Have you ever seen Scar in a fight? I know you haven't seen the sequels and spinoffs at this point, so where is the idea that Scar should win coming from? Because you're using the same logic for Simba that we didn't see him fighting. These are lions, dog. They fight on instinct. You literally raise cats. Do you think your house cat doesn't instinctually know how to defend itself? Arranged marriages are always accurate and perfect, and you shouldn't fight them. I don't know. I think if someone were to arrange a marriage between me and Karuchi, it would be perfect, and she shouldn't fight it. <laughs> 